A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus journeyed to a city called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd accompanied him. As he drew near to the gate of the city, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. A large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he was moved with pity for her and said to her, Do not weep. He stepped forward and touched the coffin. At this the bearers halted, and he said, Young man, I tell you, arise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, exclaiming, A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. This report about him spread through the whole of Judea, and in all the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We might begin, brothers and sisters, with the prayer to St. Monica on this, of course, her feast day. As we bring to mind all those that we would uh, wish to offer to the Lord through her intercession at this time, knowing that she's such a powerful woman of prayer, and therefore that she'll take our intentions as well to him, that he might grant the gift of faith to all those whom we love. Saint Monica, troubled wife and mother, many sorrows pierced your heart during your lifetime, yet you never despaired or lost faith. With confidence, persistence, and profound faith, you prayed daily for the conversion of your beloved husband, Patricius, and your beloved son, Augustine. Grant me that same fortitude, patience, and trust in the Lord. Intercede for me, dear Saint Monica, for these people. And grant me the grace to accept his will in all things through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So I hope you're all well this morning, brothers and sisters, and uh, those of you who have been doing the novena uh, will, I'm sure, take a special joy in this feast of St. Monica, not just because it's the end of the novena, uh, but because having entrusted all our prayers to her, we can be quite sure that this feast will be a day of special blessing for us, seen or unseen. So. St. Monica is a worthy patroness of our prayers, since St. Augustine tells us in his wonderful autobiography, The Confessions, of how she, of course, relentlessly prayed for him and was always ready as well with a mother's, mother's advice about the importance of faith in Christ. So many parents would love nothing more than to have their children or their grandchildren share the faith, and many children too might wish for their parents to share the faith. I was in Lourdes last April for a few days and noticed one of the plaques on the wall had been donated by somebody in thanksgiving for the conversion of my mother. So that's uh, from the late 1800s, a very uh, beautiful little memorial there. As a priest, of course, I often hear about parents who are worried about their children and uh, and it's a great cause of concern and disappointment for them that they don't share the faith or their grandchildren. And uh, this isn't new. St. Augustine too speaks about her mother's, his mother's tears and how one priest assured St. Monica that the son of so many tears would not be lost. And one of the things that we see when St. Mo Augustine writes about St. Monica that's very important as an example to us is that she maintained a friendship with her son Augustine no matter what. So at one stage when he was home for a visit and he was lecturing them 
on pagan Manichaeism, which was his religion at that time, she threw him out of the house. And she said, you're not going to say things like that in this house. But of course, like in every family, arguments and reconciliation are part and parcel of life. And at the end of his life, it's clear that she maintained his affection as a true mother. Now, it's perfectly true that parents and grandparents should be concerned about children and grandchildren and all of us about friends and, and family who don't share the faith because, of course, salvation comes through Christ alone. But if God has called us to be people who persevere every day, day after day, in prayer for the sake, for the sake of sharing the faith, then we should never become despondent about it. So we should be concerned, but never disappointed. And we should never be disappointed because no soldier fights well when he's disappointed. No soldier fights well unless he's got the morale that's going forward. So all of us should place our trust in the Lord that our prayers are working no matter how long they take. And also because the Holy Spirit is the paraclete. And what's the meaning of the word paraclete? There are de several different meanings, but it's all in, in the area of the word of the comforter or the encourager. So the Holy Spirit always wants to build us up and to uh, help us to live the Christian life with a good heart and good courage and to persevere in prayer with a good heart and a good courage. It's always rem worth remembering as well that when we have friends or family who don't practice the faith, but they know we do, then often we are the link to God for them. That they themselves might never go to Mass and they might disdain religion and everything and give out about the church. But when they're in difficulty, they'll turn to their mom or they'll turn to their friend and say, say a prayer for that. Right? So, so that believing Christians become in that sense uh, a connection between God and these people. And so as long as we are remembering them before God, they're never too, too far away from him. And also then, finally, I suppose, we can remember the importance of good example, that a child might ignore the example of his or her parents right through life, but they're not really ignoring it. It's always there for them. And in that way, uh, whether it's during this life or, or in the life to come during when, when the parent has died, the child has always had that example of Christian life and love in front of them. And let's not forget that life is long. That St. Monica prayed for 17 years for Augustine, that many people pray for longer than that, but that God nonetheless, God lives forever. And so he, he looks after all the lives of all people. And sometimes, quite simply, God is not in a rush. He's willing to take his time so that he can heal every wound bit by bit and uh, and change people bit by bit in accordance with all the depths of their humanity. And yet, conversion is a beautiful thing, and St. Augustine himself gives us the classic reason why we should pray for our friends and family to receive the gift of faith, and why a place for God in our lives is irreplaceable, and there's nothing can replace him. And he says these, this very simple idea that God has made us for himself, and so we are restless always, and we never find ourselves completely until we find ourselves in him. So he begins his confessions with these words. He says, you are great, O Lord, and greatly to be praised. Great is your power, and of your wisdom there is no end. And man who, being a part of your creation, desires to praise you. You move us to delight in praising you, for you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. And what he's saying, first of all, is actually very obvious to us. He's stating the obvious that we cannot explain our own existence. So where does everything come from? We don't know. So with every breath we take, every move we make, we have three miracles that we are witnessing to. One is the fact that anything at all exists. Why is there something rather than nothing? There's no explanation for that except in the love of God. Nothing in the universe, no star, no gas, nothing at all explains why the universe is here. 
And within the universe then, there's a second miracle, which is that not only do things exist, but things are alive. Flowers and plants and animals and us too. And then within all those things that are alive, there are some who search for meaning, who think and search for meaning. So even as we sit here at this second, we are witnessing to those three inexplicable miracles that make of our lives a mystery. And that mystery can only find its adequate answer in a loving God who from the outside with infinite power and glory creates us. So a Dominican of my own province who used to teach in the Angelicum University in Rome would say to the students, life is a mystery and either we embrace that mystery or we feel that it's rejected us. So life is a mystery and we have the choice either to embrace it or to feel that it's rejected us so that life isn't worth living in some sense or other, or life is, has been unkind to us. And so th it's a great necessity for us to turn to embrace that mystery which we are, that miracle which we are, every time we take in a breath, every time we think a thought, we're witnessing to the fact that we are miracles in ourselves. And as St. Paul said to the pagans of Athens, it is in him that we live and move and have our being. And so we can't really live without God. We can't be the people we, should, we would like to be unless we turn our eyes to that mystery of life which is around us at every moment. You move us to delight in praising you, Augustine says, for you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. I remember when I was a child, and you'll have heard this yourself, coming across a description of world religions, that God is like an elephant in a dark room. And the Buddhists are reaching out and they're trying to feel God. And they feel his trunk. And it's moving here and there. And so they, they have an idea of God, that, which is constantly ephemeral and moving and, and a bit illusory. And the Muslims are up on top. And so they have an idea of God that's very flat and very horizontal. And the Christians are feeling the legs and we have an idea of God that's very vertical and uh, not, so hard, not so flat as God. Now what's wrong with this image of God as the elephant in a dark room? The answer is we're not in a dark room. Christ has come and so the light has shone and there's no elephant. There's only the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And that's a, a much more wonderful thing to be able to see. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so, if God has made us for ourselves and our hearts are restless until they rest in him, then uh, Augustine says that really to, to find this rest is to embrace the one true mediator between God and man, the light of the world, Jesus Christ. And St. Paul, and this is more or less the final point that I'd like to make before I let you go. St. Paul in the letter to the Ephesians begins his letter by praising God. And like St. Augustine, he says exactly the same thing, that God has made us to praise him. He says to the Ephesians, he destined us in love to be his sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace. And if you read this passage in Ephesians, St. Paul then goes and he repeats it, just in case we didn't get it the first time, that God has created us and destined us to live to the praise of his glorious grace. And then uh, he says it again a third time, just in case we miss it. So God has made us to praise him. But it's not like in North Korea. You know in North Korea they get all the people out onto the streets to praise Kim, whatever his name is, the president, whether they want it or not. Right? God isn't going to get us to praise him whether we want it or not. But he, he is such, we are going to see him as such love, such fulfillment of all our desires, that we're going to praise him forever in thankfulness for the gift that we exist, for the gift that he has created us and chosen us to live, and for the gift of salvation in the Lord as well, in his death on the cross and his resurrection for our sake. So this praise of God that he has created us far will rush out of our hearts as when we see him face to face the fulfillment of all our desires 
because life is a mystery and because we live a miracle with every breath we take and every move we make. So let us pray with perseverance for ourselves and also for those whom we love, just as St. Monica did, that we might all embrace the Lord Jesus and so find the key to the mystery and miracle of life to the praise and glory of God. With great confidence too in his apostle saint jude let's remember our intentions and place them before him saint jude glorious apostle faithful servant and friend of jesus the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many but the church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases pray for me who am in need of god's mercy Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations and sufferings and particularly this request. And that I may praise God with you and all the elect throughout all eternity. I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor. I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. Saint Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thy aid. Amen. Just before we finish, brothers and sisters, this is the end of the novena for me. And I'd just like to thank those of you who attended especially in those of you who, who spent your time here when I'm sure you had other things to be doing. And I would just want to say that the greatest thing for me is to come 6,000 miles and to find people who love the Lord like you do. So uh, thank you for your, your friendship and your kindness and most especially for your faith. And I've been asked to remind you as well, as I'm sure I didn't have to remind you, that there's a little reception uh, just at the end for you to greet each other and... Uh, to get a, a cup of tea, as we'd say in Ireland, if anybody wants it there.